Okay, let's take you back to New York, where world leaders have gathered for the United Nations General Assembly. Brazil's President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva is speaking now. Let's listen in. Government and delegates present. I pay homage to our compatriot Sergio Vieira de Melo and 21 other employees of this organization, victims of the brutal attack in Baghdad 20 years ago. I also wish to express my condolences to the victims of the earthquake in Morocco and the storms that hit Libya. Like what happened recently in the state of Rio Grande do Sul in my country, these tragedies have claimed lives and causing irreparable losses. Our thoughts and prayers are with all the victims and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, exactly 20 years ago, I stood on this rostrum for the first time and said on that September 23rd, 2003, my first words before this world parliament be of confidence in the human capacity to overcome challenges and evolve towards superior forms of coexistence. I return today to say that I maintain my unshakable trust in humanity. At that time, the world had not yet realized the severity of the climate crisis. Today, it knocks on our doors, destroys our homes, our cities, our countries, kills and imposes losses and suffering on our brothers, especially the poorest. Hunger, the central theme of my speech at this World Parliament 20 years ago, today affects 735 million human beings who will go to sleep this, tonight, without knowing if they'll have anything to eat tomorrow. The world is increasingly unequal. The 10 richest billionaires have more wealth than the poorest 40% of humanity. The destiny of every child born on this planet seems to be decided while they're still in their mother's womb. The part of the world where their parents live and the social class their family belongs to will determine whether or not that child will have opportunities throughout life. Whether they will eat at every meal or whether they will be denied the right to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Whether they will have access to health care or whether they will fall to diseases that could have already been eradicated. Whether they will finish school and get a quality job or whether they will become part of the countless of unemployed, underemployed and discouraged people. First of all, we must overcome resignation, which makes us accept such unfairness as a natural phenomenon. To overcome inequality. There's a lack of political will from those who govern the world in order to overcome inequality. Ladies and gentlemen, if today I return in the honorable capacity of President of Brazil, it is thanks to the victory won by democracy in my country. Democracy ensured that we overcame hate, misinformation, and oppression. Hope, once again, has won over fear. Our mission is to unite Brazil and rebuild a sovereign, fair, sustainable, supportive, with solidarity, a generous, and a joyful country. Brazil is finding itself again with itself, with our region, with the world, and multilateralism. As I never tire of repeating, Brazil is back. Our country is back to make its due contributions in facing the major global Our country is back to make its due contribution in facing the major global challenges. We have reclaimed our foreign policy's universalism, marked by respectful dialogue with everyone. The international community is immersed in a whirlwind of multiple and simultaneous crises. The COVID-19 pandemic, the climate crisis, the food and energy insecurity have been amplified by growing geopolitical tensions. 
Racism, intolerance, xenophobia have spread, encouraged by new technologies created supposedly to bring us closer together. If we had to summarize these challenges in a single word, this challenge could be called the reason for its uh, challenge would be inequality. Inequality is at the root of this phenomenon, or acts to aggravate them. The UN's broadest and most ambitious collective action aimed at development, the 2030 Agenda, could turn into its biggest failure. We have reached half of the implementation period and are still far from the defined goals. Most of the sustainable development goals are moving at a slow place. The moral and political imperative of eradicating poverty and ending hunger appears to have been numbed. In the seven years that we have left, reducing inequalities within and between countries should become the core objective of the 2030 Agenda. Reducing inequalities within countries requires including the poor in government budgets and making the rich pay taxes that are proportional to their wealth. In Brazil, we are committed to implementing all the 17 SDGs in an integratedly adopt. We, we launched the Brazil Zero Hunger Plan, which will bring together a series of initiatives to reduce poverty and food insecurity. Amongst them is the Bolsa Família, the family stipend, which has become a global reference in income transfer programs for families that keep their children vaccinated and in school. Inspired by Brazilian Bertha Lutz, a pioneer as an advocate in gender equality in the UN Charter, we have passed a bill that makes equal pay between women and men mandatory when they perform the same role. We shall fight femicide and all forms of violence against women. We shall rigorously advocate for the rights of the LGBTQI plus groups and of people with disabilities. We have revived social participatory practices as a strategic tool for implementing public policies. Mr. President, acting against climate change involves thinking about tomorrow and facing historical inequalities. Rich countries grew based on a model with high rates of climate-damaging gas emissions. The climate emergency makes it urgent to correct course and implement what has already been agreed. There is no other reason why we speak of common but differentiated responsibilities. It is the vulnerable populations in the global south who are most affected by the loss and damage caused by climate change. The richest 10 percent of the world's population are responsible for almost half of all carbon released into the atmosphere. We, developing countries, do not want to repeat this model. In Brazil, we have already proven once and will prove again that a socially fair and environmentally sustainable model is possible. We are at the forefront of energy transition, and our matrix is already one of the cleanest in the world. 87 percent of our electrical power comes from clean and renewable sources. Solar, wind, biomass, ethanol, and biodiesel power generation is growing every year. The potential for generating green hydrogen is immense. With the Ecological Transformation Plan, we will invest in sustainable industrialization and sustainable infrastructure. We have resumed the sound and renewed Amazon agenda with oversight actions aimed at fighting environmental crimes. Over the last eight months, Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has already been reduced by 48 percent. The world, the whole world, has always talked about the Amazon.
o mundo inteiro the whole world sempre falou has da always talked about Agora, the amazon now Amazonia the amazon is speaking for itself a month ago, we hosted the Belém Summit meeting at the heart of the Amazon and launched a new collaboration agenda between countries that are part of that biome. There are 50 million South Americans in, living in the Amazon whose future depends on the decisive and coordination action of the countries that hold sovereignty over the region's territories. We all have also further dialogue with other countries that have tropical forests in Africa and Asia. We want to arrive at COP28 in Dubai with a joint vision that reflects, without any coaching, the priorities for preserving the Amazon, the Congo and Borneo Mekong basins based on our needs. Without mobilizing financial and technological resources, there's no way to implement what we decided in the Paris Agreement and the global biodiversity framework. The promise to allocate $100 billion annually to developing countries remains just that, a long promise. Today, this amount would be insufficient for a demand that already reaches trillions of dollars. Mr. President, the principle on which multilateralism is based, that of sovereign equality between nations, has been eroding. At the main global governance levels, negotiations in which all countries have a voice and vote have lost momentum. When institutions reproduce inequalities, they are part of the problem, not the solution. Last year, the IMF made available $160 billion in special drawing rights to European countries and just $34 billion to African countries. The unequal and distorted representation in the management of the IMF and the World Bank is unacceptable. We have not corrected the excesses of market deregulation and the support of the and ideology of the minimum state. The foundations of a new economic governance have not been laid. The BRICS was the result of this paralysis and constitute a strategic platform to promote cooperation between emerging countries. The recent expansion of the group at the Johannesburg summit meeting strengthens the fight for an order which accommodates the economic, geographic, and political plurality of the 21st century. We are a force that works towards fairer global trade in a context of a serious crisis in multilateralism. Rich countries' protectionisms have gained, has gained strength in the World Trade Organization remains paralyzed, especially its dispute settlement system. Nobody remembers the Doha development round anymore. In the meantime, unemployment and precarious work has been undermining people's confidence in better times, especially the youth. Governments need to break away from the increasing dissonance between the voice of the markets and the voice of the streets. Neoliberalism has aggravated the economic and political inequality that plagues democracies today. Its legacy is a mass of disenfranchised and excluded people, a misdirect far-right adventures emerge who deny politics and sell solutions that are easy as they are wrong. Many have fallen to the temptation of replacing failed neoliberalism with primitive, conservative, and authoritarian nationalism. We repudiate an agenda that uses immigrants as scapegoats, undermines the welfare state, and attacks workers' rights.
We need to reclaim the best humanist traditions which inspired the creation of the UN. No relevant economic or social active inclusion policies at cultural, education, and digital levels are fundamental for promoting democratic values and defending the rule of law. It is preserving press freedom is essential. A journalist like Julian Assange cannot be punished informing society in a transparent and legitimate way. Our fight is against misinformation and cyber crimes. Apps and platforms should not abolish the labor laws we fought so hard for. Upon taking over as the chair of the G20 next December, we will spare no effort to place the fight against inequality in all its dimensions at the core of the international agenda. Under the motto, Building a Just World and a Sustainable Planet, the Brazilian chair will coordinate social inclusion and fight against hunger, sustainable development, and reform of global governance institutions. Mr. President, there will be no sustainability or prosperity without peace. Armed conflicts are an offense to human rationality. We know the horrors and suffering produced by all wars. Promoting a culture of peace is a duty for all of us. Building it requires persistence and vigilance. It is disturbing to see that old unresolved disputes persist and new threats emerge or gain force. The difficulty of guaranteeing the creation of a state for the Palestinian people clearly shows this. Added to this case, the persevering humanitarian crisis in Haiti, the conflict in Yemen, threats to Libyan national unity, and institutional ruptures in Burkina Faso, Gabon, Guinea, Conakry, Mali, Niger, and Sudan. In Guatemala, there's a risk of a coup d'etat, which would prevent the winner of the democratic elections from taking office. The war in Ukraine exposes our collective inability to enforce the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. We do not underestimate the difficulties in achieving peace. But no solution will be lasting if it is not based on dialogue. I have reiterated that work needs to be done to create space for negotiations. A lot is invested in weapons and very little in development. Last year, military spending totaled over $2 trillion. Expenditures our nuclear weapons reached $83 billion, a value 20 times higher than the regular UN budget. Stability and security will not be achieved where there is social exclusion and inequality. The UN was born to be the home of understanding dialogue. The international community must choose. On one hand, there is the expansion of conflicts, the furthering of inequalities, and the erosion of the rule of law. On the other, the renewing of multilateral institutions dedicated to promoting peace. Unilateral sanctions cause great harm to the population of affected countries. In addition to not achieving their alleged goals, they hinder the mediation and prevention processes and the peaceful resolution of conflicts. Brazil will continue to reject measures taken without support from the UN Charter, such as the economic and financial embargo imposed on Cuba and the attempt to classify this country as a state sponsor of terrorism. We shall continue to criticize any attempts to divide the world into zones of influence and reviving the Cold War. The UN Security Council has been progressively losing its credibility. This frailty is the specific result of actions from its permanent members 
who wage unauthorized wars aimed at territorial expansion or regime change. Its paralysis is the most eloquent proof of the urgent need to reform it, which will bring it greater representation and efficacy. Ladies and gentlemen, inequalities need to inspire, inspire outrage, outrage over hunger, poverty, war, disrespect for human beings. Moved by the power of outrage, we may act willingly and unwavering in fighting inequality and effectively transforming the world around us. The UN needs to fulfill its role as a builder of a world with more solidarity, fraternity, and fairness. But it would only do so if its members have the courage to proclaim their discontent at inequality and work tirelessly to overcome it. And I will just to say thank you very much to all of you.